Bible says, in the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on the throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings, they covered their faces. With two, they covered their feet, and with two, they covered, and they were flying. And they were calling out to one another, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and the threshold shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Isaiah said, Woe unto me, I cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among the people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Verse 6, the one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Verse 8. Then I heard a voice from the Lord saying. Then I heard a voice from the Lord saying. Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, here I am. Send me. That'll be. As my dad said, that'll work. That'll work. And I, I want to talk from, from the subject of, we, we are not there yet. We are not there yet. Quick context, Isaiah was a king that ruled Judah. For 52 years, and the Bible recalls that he was a king that did was right, what was right in God's eyes. So he was a godly king. He was not a perfect king, but he was a godly king. And Isaiah ruled I mean, Isaiah was a prophet at that present time. So, Isaiah was a king that ruled Judah, right? He, he built things and, and he had uh, great armies and, 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 and he brought Judah to, to uh, the renowned status again. So, Isaiah was, a, was a, not only was he a great king, he, he was a king that accomplished much. Why? Because he did what was right in the sight of God. Right, so so the, the scriptures pick up now where, where Isaiah says this in the year that King Uzziah died, he says, I saw the Lord, right? So because Isaiah Uzziah was a good king, it was a tragedy to the nation of Judah that he died on the Messiah. But why did he die? Because he got prideful in his power, in his renown, and he said and he did things that were not righteous in the sight of God. And so what happened was he was struck with leprosy and he died for, for doing that which was against the will of God. So now we talk about a tragedy that, that Isaiah speaks about. Uh, a nation whose king died and, and a man evidently who was important to Isaiah. Tragedy. We all have been through some type of tragedy. Amen. If, if, if you haven't just lived long enough and you will go through some tragedy. It may be a loss uh, of a loved one, right? It may be uh, some type of heartbreak. It may be the loss of, of a job. Uh, and when we look on the news today, we see nothing but tragedy all around us, right? Whether it be Republican, whether it be Democrat, whether it be black or whether it be white, we see tragedy all around us. Right, so Isaiah said, in this year, in the year of our tragedy, in the year of our trouble, in the year that we're going through the toughest thing as a nation that we've ever been through, he said, I saw the Lord. Yeah. But, but, but we are not there yet. So, so I believe that Isaiah has given us a clear picture of worship. Even in the midst of tragedy, Isaiah has given us a clear picture of worship. So we're going to talk about that this morning. I want to talk about the sovereignty of God. I want to talk about our sin. I want to talk about God's sanctification. And I want to talk about our sins. Right? And so tragedy, we all go through tragedy. But I think the harder part of it is, is that we, we, we can't 
uh, realize or even fathom that it's God that allows tragedy to happen. Amen. We may blame God, but, but we don't even think about that. It, sometimes it may be God that allows the tragedy to happen. And God will allow tragedy or, or trouble to happen in your life in order to get you to see him again. Yes. Right? God will allow things to come on in your life. He will allow somebody to die in your life. He will allow trouble to come in your life. He will allow you to lose a job so that you can only look up to him. God has tremendously blessed everyone in here. Amen. Right? It Amen. looks like it to me. And sometimes in our blessing, we forget about God. Oh, yeah. And we start owning houses and cars and land. Oh, we, don't, we don't acknowledge God in our blessing. Oh, yeah. So sometimes God will allow trouble to come even in the midst of all of these things that we have. We can have the car, but the car break down. Mm -hmm. We can have the houses and still be in debt. See? We, we can... We can put our lives on a human being and still be heartbroken. Oh, yeah. Because God will allow the trial and the trouble to come in our life and all of us to get him, to see him, right? So let's talk about the sovereignty of God. Because that trouble, Isaiah said, in that year of his trouble, he says, I saw the Lord yeah. on the throne, yeah. sitting high and exalted. God saw the Lord in his sovereignty. When one king died, God said that, that, that the true king is still alive. He saw God high and sitting on his throne. And sometimes we, we become so self-sufficient, we forget it was God that woke us up this morning. Yeah. That it was God that gave us death in our body. We forget that it was God that gave us that job that we had. Amen. And that God will allow some things to come into your life so that you can look up and see the source of your salvation. Yeah. And see his sovereignty. Sovereignty means that God is still on the throne. Yes. I don't care what you see today on the news of, of, of what the Republicans and the Democrats. I don't care what you see all the wars and rumors of wars. Please believe that God is still in control. And as the old folks used to say, he rules and he's still Oh, yeah. God is still in control. So God will allow things that come in your life because you become too self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. That you think that you are self-made. Mm -hmm. Right? That you become too part of the world. Mm -hmm. And you forgot that you're not that you're not of the world. You may be in the world, but you're not of the world. We're supposed to be set apart for the world, for the work of God. Yeah. But sometimes God will allow things to come into your life so that you can look up and see that He is still sovereign. Right. That your job is not the source. It was only a resource. Right? The God is the source. Right? Promotion comes not only from the east, the Bible says, not from the west, but it comes from him. God. So God will allow things to come into your life so that you can see that he is it, sovereign. That he is still in control. Right? And then, and then, then when you see that he's sovereign again, and I'm talking to saved folk today, when you see he's sovereign, Right? When you see that God is still in control, when you can see God, how you saw him when you first got saved. Because when we all came to Christ, God was our everything. We saw God for who he really was. Right? He was our savior. Right? And so we knew God, but now we don't see God. <coughs> Preacher, what's the difference? I know God because I'm saved. But in my day-to-day -day walk with God, I don't see him. In my day to day walk with God. See, the thing about God is God is not going to come into your house and make you open up that Bible. Mm -hmm. God is not going to come into your house and make you get on your knees and call on His name. That's right. He's not going to even come in here and make you praise Him. Right? right? He's not going to do that for you. He expects for us to do that in response to what He's done for us. Amen. Amen. God is still in the prayer. Oh, yeah. When you really begin to see God as sovereign, oh, yeah. then you can see who you are. See, you can see who you are. Look what, look what Isaiah said. Isaiah said, Woe to me. When I saw God as sovereign, when I saw him high and lifted up, when I took my eyes off of King Isaiah's death, and I saw the true king that is truly on the throne, he says, Then I looked at myself. Then I looked at my sins. I looked at where I was in relationship to God. Mm -hmm. I looked at how far I walked away from him. He said, Woe unto me, I cried. He says, I'm ruined. He said, for I'm a 
man of unclean lips. And sometimes we get so far away from God, we forget to look at who we are. I know you are saved, and I know you're sanctified and filled with the Holy Spirit, right? But the Bible says that if any man says he does not say he's a liar, and the truth is not in him. And the truth is not in him. And so, and so we have to take heed where we stand, lest we fall. We have to take heed to our ways that we say not with our tongue. Yes. And this is a daily walk. What did Jesus yes. say? Jesus said, if you want to follow me, he said, look, take up the cross. Yes, sir. Deny yourself. Yes, sir. He said, and then that's when you can follow me. Amen. But this is a day-to-day -day walk. This is not a one-time thing. Every morning you get up, you, you should be looking to crucify something about yourself. Yes, Every morning you get up, you should be looking to deny something about yes, yourself. Every morning you get up, you should be able to renew your mind. Yeah. Every morning you get up, you should be up, get up thanking God for what he's done in your life. Yeah. They just say it is brand new mercies. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah. <laughs> so when we look at we know God is silent. When we're seeking a sovereign as Isaiah did, and look, Isaiah was a prophet of God. In the five chapters preceding this one, he had just prophesied to Judah about them going into captivity, uh -huh. about their sin. Yeah. Yeah. And, so, and so, in the year that King Uzziah died, guess what happened? He said, that's when I saw the Lord. Uh -huh. That is for the prophet that had five chapters later that the book was written that he prophesied to a nation that was in sin. Uh -huh. Then in chapter six, uh -huh. he says, when the king died, then I saw yeah. Yeah. So I was hearing from him, but did not see him. Yeah. I was hearing from him. So you can, you can hear about all the preaching. You can look at all the preaching on Instagram. <laughs> you can look at all the preaching on YouTube and yeah. never get to see God. Yeah. Never see God. Right. And you want to know how you don't see God? Is that when you look at the news that you're scared of what's going on right now. Yeah. Yeah. You look at the news and you, you think that the government controls your soul. No. Control the resource, right? You look at the Republicans and the Democrats, and you say that we in trouble. But the Bible has been talking about this stuff about four thousand years. Yeah. He, he's been telling us for a long time that, that in the last days these things will happen. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh, yeah. <laughs> so that's how you know that 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 you might hear God, but you don't see Him. Uh huh. You don't see God. It's one thing to hear the pastor, but it's a whole other thing to see the pastor. It's one thing to hear God. Like we hear the word of God all over the place. But we don't see God working even in the midst of this tragedy that's going on around us right now. God is still in control, and if you believe that, you will understand that he's not only in, in, in control uh, uh, in his power, but he's in control in his authority and in the, in the affairs of men. So I, I said, say, well to me, when I saw God for who he really is in my life, he said, whoa, look at me. I'm sinful. I'm a man of unclean lips. So not only do we need to see God in the sovereignty, we need to, we need to see ourselves in our sin. Amen. And this is the daily thing. You can find yourself in the daily thing. Whatever it may be in your life, we all struggle with something. Yes, oh, yeah. Paul said it like this. Paul said, now I find another law in my members. Yeah. Lord, it is the law of my mind, bringing me into captivity of the law of sin and death. That's what he says, right? He said, and praise be unto God. Yeah. Through Jesus Christ. Yeah. Right? He says, for with my mind, I tell the law of the law of God, but with my body, the law of sin. He says, who shall deliver me from this law of sin and death? Then you took the page and said, now, there was therefore no condemnation to them that be in Christ, to them that be in Christ, yeah. not outside of Christ, to them that be in Christ, right? So you have to look at yourself for who you are in relation to who God is. That will keep you humble. That will keep you from the background of your property. Because salvation is a God thing. You had nothing to do, I had nothing to do with salvation. It was all a gift of God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And God lavished his grace upon us. He lavished his grace upon us. So now we see God aside. We're not looking at the president anymore. We're not looking at the Republicans and the Democrats anymore. 
Christ, holy and acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service, and that's your response to what God has already done in your life is service. Amen. We're Amen. not there yet until we can see God and, and, and sovereign. Until we can see our sin, right? Until we can accept his sanctification, and then we can see our service. We can do something for God. We got a blessing. Amen. Amen. Wow. Uh -huh. 